How many people already today have used maps on their phone? Almost everyone, and part of that's probably because you're in an unfamiliar place. But the simple truth is that maps and phones are becoming more and more a part of everyone's daily lives. This powerful thing that says, I'm here, this is where I am, can I find out something about that? And it's really redefining how we all interact with technology, how we all interact with search. Today, our focus still is on search, but what search can be is so much broader. It's searching for images, searching for products, searching, and, with, and users' expectations of search have changed. But one of the really powerful things that's happening around the area of information and search is location. The mobile phone really acts as a cursor, a cursor that connects the physical and the digital worlds together so they can really work in harmony. One of the first things that happened when I started focusing on location was I started looking at all the different numbers. And one of the numbers really jumped out to me is really profound, which is that Google Maps usage is 40% mobile. So that is, and actually we've had two days, Christmas Day and New Year's Day this past year, where our mobile usage surpassed our desktop usage for Maps. So we're really excited about what this means in terms of the overall adoption and what we can do. Earlier this week, building on Google Maps for Navigation, we introduced something called Route Around Traffic. And what Route Around Traffic does is, once you put in your starting point and your ending point, it picks three different routes. So you can see on the top there's three different routes listed. And you can actually tap on each of those, it lights it up, and you can see not only that route, but you can actually see whether or not there's traffic on it. So just in the past few days since we've launched the product, we realized that we've actually saved our users two years. Each day. <laughs> so each day we're saving two years of time. And that ultimately adds up to about $250,000 a day in fuel. So that's money saved for the end user in terms of not sitting in traffic idling. But it's also great for the planet in terms of what it ultimately means in terms of not burning more fossil fuels to actually get somewhere just while you're sitting in traffic. Contextual discovery is taking a little bit, of, taking your location and a little bit of context and doing things that we couldn't do previously. So for example, consider this bird. So one type of search that Google just couldn't do right now is if you said, what is that bird? How could you possibly do that search on Google? Would you describe it? Right, would you say, okay, it's got a, a black head and a gray back and a white breast, like, how would you possibly convey that, that bird? But when you start to look at some of what's happening inside technology, especially with visual recognition, you could use something like Google Goggles to recognize that there is this bird and the, and the coloration on it. But if you add the context that this photo was taken in Austin, Texas in March, you can much more quickly narrow in on a series of species and determine this is the mockingbird, which is the state bird of Texas. So you can really do a lot of things with location and context that make entirely new forms of search possible. So there's a lot of things that, can, that already exist that can be pulled together in terms of access to weather, to traffic, to schedules, to really help make us all that much more efficient. And I think that that really is what pulls together location, contextual discovery, all of these different pieces to ultimately, hopefully, make things a lot more interesting and useful for us. And I think there's something really profound happening around location, uh, and mobile technology, and really think about what this could mean in terms of how much more efficient we can all be, how much more time we'd have to do interesting things. I think it's really exciting.